The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. You're a little low, CJ, audio-wise. Um, there you go. Now there we go. Back. And yesterday was the second meeting of the budget hearings or review. You mean the second diatribe of lies, more the lies, and guess what? Can you buy this bull? And 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 for we are, I am going to officially name this budget the. 1% budget because this is for all the rich and politically connected people in the city because when we look at this budget and see that we haven't had any increases in 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 any services any any workers and I, I said that in my very brief presentation yesterday three minutes is not enough I don't think I'm gonna ever speak again at citizens input they don't allow citizens enough time to to even make a point uh, but the fact is, if you look, the only people that got pay raises and the only increases in department budgets went to politically connected people, the mayor's office, 30 percent uh, pay raises from 64,000 and 90,000, pay raises, step increases that don't exist and on an ordinance, but not one additional police officer, not one additional firefighter, and as I said to yesterday, I don't want them to get bursitis from patting themselves on the back for, for maintaining public safety levels. They are inadequate and should be increased when possible. And rather than give the mayor's office pay raises of 30% and increase salaries uh, over 40%, uh, maybe we should have done that. So this budget, besides being full of absolute uh, misrepresentations and lies, is a, is a budget for the rich. A you know, budget for the rich with a massive, giant middle finger to every taxpayer and person who's living on a fixed income or who's working for a, who can't get a 40% raise. Well, you know, Chip, I went to uh, CVS Pharmacy and I went to Walgreens. I was looking for Sergi Lube or KY. Uh, they, to they told me they were ordered by the Department of Public Health to remove it as the city wanted to be sure that everyone took it dry. <laughs> I have a quote, though, that I, I really want to read because there's a lot of people out there who are saying that, you know, we won't give this, this boy emperor a chance and, you know, the city members of the city council won't give him a chance. So I want to read you this. This is a, a quote from Rob Siltanen. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward, and while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I think we've been classified as the crazy ones for a long time, Chip. Yeah, well, you know, we've said for a long time, these people who say, you know, give them a chance, you know, no, you don't get a chance. You know, you don't get a chance. You don't get on-the-job training when you, when, you, when you assume the position, the highest position in city government. Right. I'm sorry. You know, you don't get to be the head mechanic if you can't fix a car. You don't get to be the head of anything if you don't. Why, when in politics, do we think that we have to give them a learning curve? Yeah, yeah, screw up the city, spend too much money, raise our taxes, raise our fees, and we forgive you because you're just learning. Well, you don't do that to your car mechanic. You don't do that to anybody. You don't go to stores that overcharge you. You don't go to restaurants that overcharge you. Uh, but we do it in, we do it in, in government. Uh, and you know something? The bottom line with this is you can, you can say what you want, but you know something? 
we wouldn't be the United States of America. We would be the colonies. Still, we would still be in the British Empire if a few people got tired of giving King George a break and letting them tax the crap out of them and giving them nothing for it and just filling the coffers of, of Great Britain. We would still be English. So if you don't like it, tough. Because the fact is, listen, when you're not doing the job, you're not doing a job. This budget is just, it, it's, a, it's a catastrophe. I mean, you know, it's a manipulation. And to hear some of these counselors, I mean, talk about, talk about uh, having, they don't need KY because they're lubricating it with their tongue. You know, because it, it's just disgusting to hear, oh, this is such a transparent budget. And yesterday at my presentation, uh, you know, City Council Joe Camara, and I guess he was, wasn't the only one. I guess he said it, but somebody else said it, I guess. Uh, I've been told. Um, but uh, the first thing I did was object to referring to the budget as a living, breathing document. That's absolute horse shit, okay? <laughs> that, that's what it is. It's not a living, breathing document. It's a budget. And it's supposed to be as accurate as possible. It is a blueprint for the fiduciary responsibilities of the city. And it reflects the priorities of this city. It's not a living, breathing document. That's what corporations did when they were trying to get more breaks for themselves. Treat us like we're people. You're not people. You're greedy, and you want, all you want is more money for your stockholders. So, but they got that. And now the city is trying to make everybody believe that this document is some kind of uh, some kind of artificial intelligence. It's, it's, it's another life form that they get to play around. That's all it is, is code for let us get, have the money and do anything we want without having to tell you or the city council. Because remember, it's a living, breathing document and things change. It's not supposed to change. Last night, I encouraged the people who were at the meeting and I encourage you to go online and look at the city of Newton's budget. Now, the city of Newton is the number one city in the state of Massachusetts of our size. It's got about 2,000 less people. The income is about four times what ours is, the household income. The community is 75% of the people own property. Um, it's at the top of every scale, the lowest amount of people below the poverty level, the lowest amount of people uh, you know, with, with, without uh, educations. 75% have bachelor's degrees, actually, in the community. But look at their budget. It reflects, and as I said at the council meeting, why does Fall River always say, this is the way we do it in Fall River? Well, what we've succeeded in doing in Fall River over the past decade is go from the second poorest city in this city, in the state, to the poorest city, to, to, to going from the second lowest, uh, second highest unemployment rate to the highest. You know, we haven't done very well in moving this city anywhere but down. But you look at the Newton budget, it doesn't, it doesn't say it's a living, breathing document. It begins with a, a complete review of everything that was accomplished by every department in the previous year. Then it has... Surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Goma. But, and, then, and then it has what they're going to do this year. And in Newton, they don't come back a month after the budget and ask for money for things that they have to do that weren't in their budget because they don't get it. It's only for emergencies. They have what's called outcome-based budgeting in, in, in Newton. And what they do is they hold fast to that budget and try to project it as accurately as possible and stay within it. Of course, there's always unforeseen, but the fact is they stay. It's like our health care plan. We've been running on the budget for decades. Why? Because Blue Cross and other actuarials compute how much we're going to spend on health care. And they do it not as a living, breathing document, but as a cold, calculated exercise in mathematics. They look, at, they look at trends, they look at cost projections, they look at everything. They come up with a reasonable factor 
of, of uh, plus or minus as polls do. And then they bring forward their actuarial projection for how much we should budget. And you know something? They're right 99.9% .9 of the time. I've been around a very long time. I was the chairman of the healthcare advisory board for 24 years. And I'm back on the board. And I'm the PEC rep for all the retirees. I haven't seen them, I haven't seen them blow a year and I can't even remember if they ever did. You know why? Because they didn't look at the they didn't look at the healthcare budget as a living, breathing document. They looked at it as a blueprint to maintain fiduciary responsibility, and they came up with hard, fast figures and they presented them. And this is all BS. So our counselors who are kissing the mayor's butt can justify a vote for a budget that number one only gives money to the people who don't need it screws every taxpayer and doesn't take into consideration half the things that that we're going to face in the future we have terrible, a terrible terrible that's surprise, right surprise, and surprise. and we have a we have a trash private privatization of trash that if we cancel we're going to have over a million dollars a year in penalties and we're going to sign a contract like this for 10 it's insane but, you know, that's my rant because I was down there, and I'll tell you, after, you know, th you know, only get three minutes, you can only say about one-tenth of what you need to say, and, and after you sit there watching some of these counselors, you're, you're on the verge of sticking pins in your eyeballs because you're so, you get so frustrated. Well, you know, Chip, what do you know? You know, I provided the city council because the budget only needs to be approved by five votes. I don't know where we had gotten in the past that they needed six, but they only needed five because that comes under Mass General Law 44, Section 32. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but I am going to get into one section, which is uh, 44, Section 32, Paragraph 2. And if you go down to the third paragraph, it opens with, the city council may, by majority vote, make appropriations for the purposes recommended and may reduce or reject any amount recommended in the annual budget. Now, how many times have we heard that we don't? We can only vote the budget up or down? We don't have a say in the line items. Ah, there's another myth, huh? They love to create myths, like living, breathing documents, yes. and they love to create myths, right. and, and we should get a tax raise every year, right? you know, and, and it's our fault because we don't understand the fact that we should get our taxes raised every year, even though every Every noted economist in history has said the best way to stimulate the economy is, is to hold taxes down and give, give the general public more money to spend. But no, this is Fall River, and, and this is the mythology in action. And we hear how wonderful the budget is. And, and, and you know, Joe Camara, as I said, Joe Camara objected to me saying, you know, uh, making the case, saying that it's not a living breathing. And he said, he tried to explain why he said it. He said it was because this is the first time we've ever have, had a zero-based budget and all the rest of them were based on assumptions and projections. Well, I hate to tell you this, but this isn't a zero-based budget, truly. And, and there are many presumptions and assumptions in this budget and the fact is, and the most important fact is what he said, if you watch the tape, he was basically justifying a yes vote on the budget because he feels it's, it's transparent or, and it, or it's a zero-based budget. But the fact is, that's not why you vote for a budget. You vote for a budget not, you know, you don't vote for a budget just because it's a zero-based budget. If it's a zero-based budget, and we save a hundred million dollars and we raise the mayor's salary to a hundred million dollars, you don't vote for the budget. You vote for the budget because it reflects the priorities of the people of the city of Fall River. Do you truly believe? And Joe and Joe's a friend of mine, and I vehemently disagree with this with what he's doing right now. The well, fact is that, you know. You don't vote for a you don't vote for a budget because you like the way it's put together. You vote for a budget because it's in the best interest of the people you were elected to represent. Do you really believe that the taxpayers 
of the City of Fall River want a budget that increases the mayor's budget 30% so he can give all his cronies a pay raise, and then he moves half of it over to hide it, you call it transparent, but he slid some money over into admin so he could hide it, and it wouldn't look like the big 30%. It would 16 and 13, 16 point something and 13 point something. We'll round it up to 30. And then these other pay raises from 64,000 to 90,000, over 40%. How about the explanation? And How about the explanation? Well, we got to have the budget approved first before yeah. we change the ordinance. Another myth. Another <laughs> myth. You know, another myth. Bull, you know, bull. You know, and, but th see, this is the problem. We have these counselors up there, and most of them, when they got elected, didn't have the best interest of the people at heart. Right. And now it's being vividly revealed at these meetings. When you see people basically you know, making ridiculous arguments and saying like, oh, you know, look at us. We're not threatening to cut public safety this year. Well, guess what? What's the budget down? $10 million, supposedly? Yes. Yeah, um, yep. Well, not one firefighter, not one. Po they didn't even take a lousy million bucks out of that supposed $10 million that they saved, which is crap, and invested in one more clerk to help you get your bills paid faster so you don't stand in a line that wraps around the second floor four times. Not one police officer, not one firefighter. So this, is this budget truly reflective of what the people want? I don't pay my taxes for the mayor to give his, whatever he calls them, uh, public relations, I don't, I don't know what the euphemistic title is. Give him a raise that is actually illegal because he said it was a step increase. But if you look at the city ordinance, there's no step increases in that ordinance. It's just the salary. So th th that means then there needs to be a legislative action on that in order to incre put incremental step increases like the firefighters and police officers have for years on the job. They get incremental steps. They start at one grade. But, you know, these are the kind of things that, that they they, these are the kind of hoaxes they perpetrate on the public. And then we've got, we've got, the, we, we've got the, the BS twins saying that, oh, yeah, we've got to have the money in a budget. Well, you know, if you give them the money, they'll spend it. Why not require them to, to show why they need this? Why did we need to raise all these? Why haven't we had, if we're in such great financial woe, why haven't we had a, a pay freeze? Why don't we have a pay freeze and a true reorganization and then take the money we save and put it into places where we need it, like public safety, services to the, to the public, and heaven forbid, not increasing taxes and fees a zillion percent, and as much as you can legally. I mean, you know, this is the whole thing about this budget. This is much to do about nothing. Just on the trash, the privatization of trash and the exorbitant early termination fees and the gaps and the 10-year length of the contract, this budget should be rejected. And not only take, that's not even taken into consideration that the city can't, probably will lose the unfair labor practice and then it's going to be total chaos because contrary with the, to what the mayor believes, he can't ignore the Labor Relations Commission. When they rule, he will comply, or they're going to come and get him. You know, the I state police. The, po the state police will come and get him and drag him up to Boston to be ordered to do it. I so, would pay to see that. So happen. get ready, practice putting your hands behind your back, because the fact is that if you don't comply with that, you're statutorily required to comply with that when the labor race la, 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 labor <laughs> relations commission sends down a ruling you better comply and if you lose you better pay attention because they will they will and and it's happened because i won a labor relations commission uh suit one time and and one of the legal representatives said the mayor wasn't going to comply and, and they they told them very clearly that they'd bring the mayor up there in handcuffs if they had to uh, and would order him to comply, and if he didn't, they'd throw him in jail. So guess what? 
you know, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, Fall River is not its own universe. We do have laws that you have to comply with. Well, you know, the, the thing is, is that we, we, you know, we're hearing it all. And I think the biggest problem we have is you have a small minority of individuals who walk around looking through rose-colored glasses and all they see is, he's wonderful. He has the best interest of Fall River in the heart. Oh, praise be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. You know, I mean, it gets to be nauseating. Mm. I mean, even some of the people who were so far against a lot of what's going on right now have turned around and turned tail and they're kissing their own ass. And you know what? That's sad because the people have the right, the power and the authority to take this back, but they won't. And, and that's the problem. I've heard numerous people turn around and say, hey, we should do this, we should do that. I said, I'll draft the petition, you go out and get the signatures. Oh no, I don't want to do all the work. Do they think that it just happens overnight? Are you so spineless in Fall River that you can't take on the city administration, that you can't take on the city councilors? That you can't tell them you represent me? And you're just willing to take whatever happens? You know, that happened back in the 1930s and 1940s. And a whole group of people were almost exterminated. Are you going to step into the oven? That's what I want to know. But, you know, <laughs> I, I just don't pull any punches, do I? But, you know, the, the, the thing that really gets me laughing is that they all have the wonderful things to say to the press. You know, Linda's talking, you know, city council's talking money in the first day of the city budget. Councilor Perra questions Fall River sanitation contracts. City council round two budget review meetings, parks, trash, and maintenance. Trash, trash, trash. What part of trash do doesn't people understand? Okay? I gave this mayor, this city council, everyone, the solution. It's an easy solution. Effective July 1, 2016, the city of Fall River shall no longer take part in, manage, or participate in solid waste management. Solid waste management shall now become the responsibility of the property owners. Failure to initiate a contract by such date will require the Board of Health to issue significant fines for noncompliance with health ordinances. End of story. Yeah. And then the property owners can decide who they're going to go with based upon price. And we won't have to be fighting this. And then guess what? You will have a $9 million savings right off the bat. And how many firefighters can that hire? How many police officers can None, that hire? None, because they're going to send it, they're going to put it all in, in, the, in the mayor's budget and, and give their friends pay raises. Yeah, they're going to give Faust Fiore, this, the uh, school committee member from Old Rochester, another raise. Which, well, by the way, you're required by law to be a resident in Fall River, Faust. Well, I gotta, I, I've got to comment on one thing in, in this article, City, uh, at, uh, City Council's Round 2 uh, Budget Review. Uh, city uh, Councilor Cliff Pond asked uh, Joe Macy, the city's lawyer, to explain the city's risk of incurring a termination fee. Uh, and then it went on to say about the uh, unfair labor practice. And the quote was from uh, Macy, quote, it doesn't look like even if there is an adverse decision 18 or 20 months down the road that it will adversely affect, adversely impact the city financially, unquote. Well, I, that is the most ridiculous statement I have ever heard. I mean, you know, with all due respect to, to, to Judge Macy, he was a judge in a criminal court, or in a court. He wasn't a labor relations, uh, he wasn't involved in labor relations, and that's a specialty. The fact is that it will adversely affect, it has to adversely. What happens, and it may not be 18 to 20 months down the road, it may be pretty quick. Um, what happens if they order him back to the table? I know what they're going to say. The mayor's already said it, and he's already set himself up for another finding against the city. He said, I don't care what the, what the commission says. I'm not going to bring him back. So if they're ordered back to the bargaining table, they're going to refuse to bargain in good faith, which is, again, repeating the same unfair labor practice they did in the first place. There will be massive suits. There will be massive litigation by the Teamsters on this. And there should be, justifiably so. That statement is, is absolutely untrue. 
Because I'll tell you one thing, if they did this to my union when I was running it, I don't care how much it would have cost. I would have fought them for the, for the next 10 years. This is fundamentally what they did when they changed the dispatches from firefighters to civilians, and they tried to unilaterally do it, and we fought them, and we got an unfair labor practice, and they were ordered back to the table, and it cost them a lot of money. It's not their money. That's right. And you know something, you, you know something CJ, you, 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 brought, you brought up a very, very good point. I apologize, Attorney Macy, you were right. It will not add adversely impact the city financially it would add it will adversely affect the taxpayer that's right you remember right. that uh, you're right i apologize <laughs> i apologize. remember that it's not their money so they don't care and that's the problem and the biggest problem is we have a judge who i believe has already exceeded the 960 hours that he's allowed to work as a retiree now, according to state law, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're, you're more familiar with it than I am, at 960, they have to be terminated, not let go, not laid off. They have to be terminated. Well, we, we are going to have a, we are going to have a very, very clear definition, and it, that's true. That's the interpretation I have been told by people from Perak. But at the, we have a meeting next week of the retirement board, and we, you know, uh, you know. Mr. Macy's pension does not come under the purview of the Fall River Retirement right. Board, as Lou Pacheco's didn't. But the new hire does, and the fiduciary responsibility of the board is very important to all of the people on the board and to its director. And we've already told the city that we want a compliance with ours, but I am going to ask the attorney for the Retirement Board to get an opinion from PERAC as to these uh, assertions that they can come back and work, you know, uh, uh, volunteer, because that's not the way the PERAC interpretation has been, has been given to me. That once you put in your 960, you can't work in that capacity voluntarily or not, otherwise it will be construed as work and your pension will be, your pension will be adjusted uh, proportionately. So, you know, the, you know, they love to make these statements and they love to give opinions, but the fact is that, again, if we do this, there's more litigation and more cost. Why? Because Fall River just doesn't comply with laws. I have a, an article from probably 15 years ago where a federal judge said, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, it's not a direct quote, but he said, I'm sick and tired of seeing Fall River in my courtroom because they never to ever comply with the law. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just amazing. And, you Why know, should we comply? This because what, what will we say? This is the way we do it in Fall River. Right. Even if it's wrong, we don't care. That's it's, right. It's the way we do it. Hey, you know, I mean, it makes no sense. But, you know, this budget is amazing. We already know that the mayor probably has the votes. Um, and I, I, I hate saying that, but, and the problem is this. The voters, you the voters, re-elected Linda Pereira, Joe Camara, Steve Long, who, by the way, Steve Long has proven that he's going to hold up to the family honor and the family tree of the Longs and the Coogans, and he's going to make sure that his lips are so brown that the flies are swarming around it. Because a Long and a Coogan has never done anything unless it serves their interests or the interests of their family. Well, you got plenty to be angry about, so stay angry. And remember, watch us on Friday, and we'll see how much more we're going to have to say. See you later. Have a great day.